COVID-19 has spread vastly into different sectors and affairs of life in the next couple of weeks, what should we expect in the oil and gas industry globally? Mm. <laughs> You know, the oil and gas industry is such is an industry that is very volatile. Mm -hmm. you know, any any macroeconomic or microeconomic shifts, mm -hmm. you know, see the effects almost immediately in the industry, especially in the crude price. Yes. Currently, we are experiencing a major nose dive that is even worse than what we saw. You know, when we had the last um, recession situation. Yeah. So um, we have a glut in the industry both the upstream and the downstream, the crude is everywhere. Uh, you know, it's, it started with Russia and... Um, uh, Ro China. Uh, yes, Russia and China being at war over um, uh, whether to continue production or not to continue production. But unfortunately, they didn't get to agree to that before this um, COVID-19, you know, took over. And now, as at this morning, the price is about $23 per barrel, which is really, 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 really low. You know, so it's about every country, you know, mapping up their strategy how to maximize the situation such that at the end of everything or at the end of the lockdown, there would still be some opportunities. Do you think the federal government have the strategy, the economic strategy or the financial strategy with everything going on at the moment? Hmm, Nigerian federal government. Well, um, let me respond to that by talking about what America has done. Yes, America in their own, um, what they've done the, in, in the industry is to cut off production of their shale oil mm. and they are currently doing a massive mop-up, mm. massive you know, stockpiling of the cheap oil from markets like Nigeria and any other person that wants mm. to sell. And on the other side, China is mopping up stocks of <laughs> all the crashed stocks, you know, and trying to buy over as many blue chip organizations as possible. For Nigeria, I haven't really seen so much. Um, we, we rely a lot on OPEC instructions, so mm. I'm sure we are waiting directive or we are taking directive already from OPEC. And um, I know two days ago, um, the CBN took a decision to actually devalue Naira to a 380 um, Naira per dollar. So my concern, you know, regarding the Nigerian situation is I really, really pray that uh, we will not slip into, into recession again, mm. you know, knowing fully well that um, crude oil, you know, is a major economic driver for us. In That's Nigeria. what we rely on here. You know, so... Um, you know, the player is for everybody in the industry or in the chain, along the value chain, the energy value chain, to really put on their thinking cap and let's start seeing what we can also do. You know, unfortunately, unlike some other countries, we don't have an integrated oil and gas system. Yes. Or we don't have a healthy integrated oil and gas system. Our refineries aren't working. There are a lot of things that we rely on the outside market to achieve. You know, so our main strength is the crude production and now the price is, is crashed all right thank you so much for sharing that thought with us in your previous interviews you made the crude oil refinery business sound like a pure water production business any secrets you want to share with us here <laughs> It's not pure water <laughs> yes i'm not saying <laughs> okay it's not pure water but what yeah. i try to pass across in that um during that session was to let nigerians go generally africans know that we just have to have an integrated system mm -hmm. you know when we had the 2008 price crash mm -hmm. countries that had integrated oil and gas system the entire value chain they didn't feel it so much and the same thing with the 2013 you know crash as well all of a sudden the downstream and the midstream started picking up and they were now like the sucker for the upstream crash mm -hmm. so um the thing is Refining, yeah, it's a bit, it can be really complex, but things have changed. There are new technologies now that we can leverage on. I, mo I mentioned the modular system, the modular refining system uh, during that last interview. Mm. And it's still like a lifesaver because unlike the large complex refining system, it's easier to, 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 to construct, is a lot cheaper. You can't wait to have the millions of um, billions of um, dollars to start co you know, constructing the complex refinery. There are three major types of refinery. There's a simple, 
there's the complex and then there's the large complex you know the modular refinery falls in the simple refining refinery um, um, uh, uh, um, type and um, it's 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 been so uh, made it's been made so simple that you necessarily don't even have to churn out all the products you can just choose your refinery to churn out just one single product or two products or just three products so for example you could just you know decide to couple or construct a refinery system that will just churn out your your dual purpose kerosene that you can either use as household kerosene or you use as aviation foil you know yeah. or you could just couple you know the refining system to just churn out your distillates and that is kerosene and diesel you know, so that's the flexibility I was trying to emphasize during that interview, that we as Nigerians need to leverage more on such opportunities and Africans at large, you know. And then, like I said, people are already doing it and we just need to see more of it happen. And there are funds available. With a $250 million, you can actually have a... A, a, a simple modular refinery unlike if you have to do a major complex refinery that goes in, you know that cost about five billion dollars ten billion dollars you know and majorly for the Nigerian situation you know sometimes when I read stories of us spending 11 billion dollars on subsidy it's kind of I just can't it just doesn't add up you know being mm. a mathematician I'm, you know I just keep calculating that why would we be wasting so much money when that money can actually be used to set up a refinery yeah, I'm glad you mentioned um, what's it called subsidy at the moment because I, I understand that recently the federal government cut down 20 naira from petrol pricing um, uh, owning to crash in world oil price what should Nigerians look out for it is is it a subsidy related or is it going to be reviewed going forward oh well like i said earlier the market it's it's very volatile the pricing is very volatile it's can when it, when there's mm. a, a macro a macroeconomic situation anywhere in the world it can affect the market's dynamics and realities so i guess it's just the government you know responding to the fact that there's a glut of products all over the place even the refined products you know because when crude is low, definitely PMS and AGU it will and DPK definitely will be affected. Definitely low as well. yeah. So there's a glut, and um, it's just a reaction. And of course, we don't want a case where the people, there will be unnecessary civil unrest over the fact that other nations that probably reduced or crashed their price of refined products, and we haven't done that. All right. Thank you so much for sharing um, that thought as well with us. You know, just diving a little bit away from crude oil and the price and all of that, let's not lose concentration of what is affecting us globally. Because I know that I've heard recently about people consuming sanitizers or Dettol or make and made sanitizers with a mix of 90% alcohol in it as a doctor or well a professional let me not say a doctor what do you have to say um, to these unhealthy rumors you know and what's your advice for the public knowing that at least 60% of alcohol is what WHO has advised that our has recommended during the period of this crisis that whenever we want to buy a sanitizer we should look out for any sanitizer that has 60 percent you know how nigerians are what do you have to say to that okay well what i would say is we should remember the past once beating twice shy mm. during the ebola saga a lot of people actually died mm. before the ebola you know came to them or before they caught the ebola because there were all sort of um, self-medication out there people mm. were in injecting salt mm. birthing with salt they, they became, you know, they had um, a hypertensive situation and eventually they passed on. Yeah. And currently, you know, according to the news, we have people in the hospitals that because they, they had an overdose of chloroquine, they are currently, you know, um, ad uh, 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 admitted yeah, into the hospital. You know, I mean, into the hospitals. So it's, it's, it's a clarion call, I think, for the media people to please out there pass across the positive message and as much as possible shut down all those negative I had to even do a shutdown this morning on, on some platforms 
because people were spreading all sorts of go and drink bicarbonate I made mix me lemon <laughs> with bicarbonate and then drink it and it will now turn to alkaline solution all sorts and all kinds all right thank you so much hold your thoughts we'll go on a quick break and when we return we will pick we will continue from where you are all right thank you so much for joining us and real talk with kike we were talking earlier regarding um sanitizer debtor and you know the public you know abusing and as at this morning we have 46 new cases of um corona patients so the question now is how can we help the public what 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 do you even think that the public needs to go on a shutdown so that at least we can curb all the challenges that is ongoing at the moment and see it, maybe that will even reduce the deaths and those people that are being affected what's your opinion on that okay yes the the shutdown or the lockdown is actually um, a step in the right direction and i would like to commend the governor of Lagos state mm. for taking that decision you know it's 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 very good and um however like i was saying before we went on that short break we need to be careful of the kind of um, information that goes out there and how we also inject those information mm. you know because people just see all sorts and they they, they want to try it people don't want to die you know mm. but in the in the process of not wanting to die let, let me give a typical example is the chlor chloroquine injection of chloroquine people are the overdose because of chloroquine yeah. the overdose of chloroquine will actually give is is so fatal that it can result in immediate cardiac arrest so covid 19 will take 14 days to mature and all that cardiac arrest is immediate exactly you know so it's like you you're you're trying to run away from death and then you are meeting death exactly than you're expected. So uh, people need to my message you know the, the message of my team to everybody is be careful the kind of information you are injecting look at information from the world health organization um health practitioners as guidelines consultants as guidelines don't just take everything hook line and sinker go and put um, uh, uh, onions by some people said put onion by your socks it will take it away i don't say drink um, 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 and socks uh, i don't want to drink um, baking soda mm -hmm. that, that, you know i don't want to say drink um, all, all right. sorts and all kinds yeah so we i just know there are a lot of measures out there but people need to be careful but being careful it doesn't mean that you should be fearful yeah. it's important for us to try and take measures especially mm -hmm. what you just said that we should listen to who at this time as guidelines so we have a message from ayoba miokola he said good evening real talk with kike and regards to mrs oladunio i would like to know how can how how we can bring the multinational companies and other big industry together in the fight against coronavirus in Nigeria, financially and otherwise. Thank you so much, Ayobami. One day I'll reach out to you soon. <laughs> okay, one of our um, fans. I know quite a number of organizations, you know, individually had started responding, you know, mm. corporate response to the situation. Um, well, in my industry, I've been watching out for my industry. Mm. I know um, Dangote Refinery. They had made some like a hundred million naira donations, mm. hundred million dollars. I'm not sure of the currency now. Mm. Donations to be able to um, fight. I think it's um hundred million in in dollars. Uh, hundred million in respect of the cement uh, that oh. will be given to Lagos oh. State. I oh. think that was what I read. I'm not oh, okay. that okay. sure. Of oh, okay, okay. Well, that's that, a mix yeah. then. Yeah. There's another one uh, recently this afternoon from. Um, Fanfa oil, that is uh, Mrs. Um, Folonjo Alakija. Yeah. And the commission also made some, our organization have made some donations to um, the importation or production of more um, kits, kits, you know, uh, protective, personal protective kits, you know, against the CVD-19, you know. So um, I also know that quite a number of organizations are doing internal things, at least starting with their own staff, then taking it beyond their staff to their communities. And then from their communities to the general public so all right thank you so much for that so talking about staff and organization as the first national president of weog uh what are your main achievements and what is the vision of your organization of the organization okay let me start with the vision of the organization yeah our vision is to be able to see diversity and you know inclusion mm. happen in the energy oil and gas industry that mm. is you know traditionally a uh, highly male dominated industry yes and then we also want to want our female folks to know mm. that unlike before where 
um, the industry is it's driven by your theoretical knowledge mm -hmm. and your six packs. <laughs> you know your muscle, your biceps, and your six packs. And because of that, we didn't really have so many female folks in the industry. Mm. It's, uh, things have changed now, thank God to technology. Now we have artificial intelligence, we have internet of things, we have digital systems to actually help bridge some of those gaps. Mm. You can actually use your robotic system to do like a cleanup mm. and all sorts. So we need more female in the industry and part of, like I said, part of our vision is to be able to close that huge gap. The gap is huge. It's not only in Nigeria. It's actually across the world. But Nigerian zone is if it's across the world. And, I'm, and world. I'm glad that you mentioned that we need more female in that industry. And you said in one of your interviews that we are privileged, that you were privileged to enter the oil and gas industry 25 years ago. Are those privileges still there today? Does the playground seem fair for women? Men, knowing that is a male dominated industry oh yeah the, the opportunities are still there like i like i mentioned i joined the indo i started in the industry as an intern actually mm. I, I did my industrial attachments in the in the days the way that i uh, also strike used to work nigeria like i mm. mentioned however these days well the also tracks are reduced there are a lot of private um, universities now and um, i know most of the oil and gas company have GT, they call it graduate training mm. programs, where they um, accommodate, you know, upcoming generation into the industry. They go through like a year training, six month training, one year training, two years training, depending on their structure. Mm. And then they use the skill to kind of coach and mentor them into the um, industry at mm. large. And there's also a lot of one of the things we actually have plans for in the York is to be able to create like a mentorship system because yes I, I entered the industry you know a while ago but there are a lot of things that i would have escaped let me use that word <laughs> from if there were a proper mentorship system in place you know and quite a number of women i also talk to you know communicates that as well you know so we want to be able to have like a structured ment mentorship system where younger generation even the ones that are already there you know let them be able to know what to do to actually shatter this the, the glass ceiling mm. like they say these days all right because of time we're running out of time i think that i'll just have to ask you um one or two questions just a, 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 or one question because they're already giving me a hand but don't worry we will bring you back when we increase our time belt on real talk we kick it from the third episode we have just three more weeks and i will have time to deal with trauma <laughs> Anyway, what are the projects you are currently working on and what is uh, what is in view of your people out there, basically? Okay, so women in energy, oil and gas, mm. we have quite a number of things we are working on. Number one, we are working on uh, the STEM system. We want our young, our girls, girls right from elementary, primary school, secondary school, university, um, young graduates to be able to come into the industry. We want to close the gap yeah. in the industry. We want to use women in the industry to move the nation forward because it is it is well known research now that and proven that women led organization have more financial um, income you know so we need more women in the industry to be able to close all the energy gaps we have in nigeria all right and to be able to all right thank you so much for joining us today and for all you've shared with us today and sharing part of your time with us so it's unfortunate that um we are running out we've run out of time so our closing remark courtesy omolua abu personality from gold bay is iyani Wura. a mother is an inest inestimable treasure let's take our time um as an omolua be respected citizens to appreciate every mother aspiring and committed one they are irreplaceable and they hold the key to the future to the young generation thank you so much again for joining us today ma and i know that uh, all the information that you've shared today has been very helpful i will be back next week same time for another real talk but until then please remember every nigerian should be responsible for their health and not only the government it's more important for us as individuals to take care of our hygiene i understand that navigating during these uncertainties caused by this outbreak is no joke but please be responsible and buy for now with all the guns that Joma is pointing at <laughs> 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 buy for now